heavenly race is a personal race, brother. I don't care who has backslidden. I don't care who is angry with God. I don't care who is angry with me. Jesus must be exalted. The significance of the arrest and suffering of Jesus cannot be in vain in your day-to-day life. Jesus was wounded for your transgression. He was bruised for your iniquities. So the pain of iniquities were released on Jesus by the wounds that he sustained. It means that when Jesus suffered and died on Calvary, he ended sin. Then Paul wrote in Romans and said, shall we continue in sin for grace to abound? Paul says, God forbid. It means that if you live in transgressions and iniquities after your identification with the death and the resurrection of Christ, you have defied and you have watered down all of the efforts of Christ on that Calvary. Let me bring it home. Can I bring it home? It means that if you're born again and you live in sin, it is a sign that you are not born again. So the question will be, are those who truly call themselves born again believers, truly are they genuinely born again? You can be in church for 20 years and not be born again. You can be a preacher for 20, 30 years and not be born again. Let me make this very clear. Born again must be an encounter. A genuine born again experience must be an encounter with God. Because the Bible says in the day of Pentecost, the disciples of Jesus were full of the Holy Ghost. The word of God in their lips was on fire. When Peter preached with boldness, the Bible recorded that suddenly the heart of the people were pricked. There was no emotion involved. There was no good music somewhere. There was no beautiful springs somewhere. It was only the word of God, the preaching of Jesus Christ. I can tell you why the glory of God is not found in the church today. I can tell you why we have a bunch of preachers everywhere, a bunch of folks who call themselves Christians, but they live in sin. The church of today is not the same church that we have in the early days. In fact, in the early days, the Bible says that they gather and pray, and there were earthquakes. Not destructive earthquakes, but earthquakes as a result of the manifest presence of the Lord made a witness in their days of prayer and and worship on a God. They had tangible manifestations of the glory of God because these folks lived up to what they preached. The suffering of Christ will not be in vain. He was wounded to end my transgression. So why would I continue to transgress? He was bruised for my iniquities. Then why should I live in iniquities? The Bible says there were preachers who called themselves apostles. Preachers who called themselves prophets, evangelists, teachers and pastors. Who in the last day came to Jesus and said, Lord, 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 we have done miracles in thy name. We have cast out demons in thy name. We have preached the gospel to millions and billions of people and they came to Christ. And Jesus said in reply, he said unto them, Depart from me, 
you workers of iniquities. He was bruised for our iniquities. Yet he rejected a certain state of believers, a certain state of preachers for their iniquities. Because of this false gospel of grace, we have raised Jezebels. Wickedness has thrived in the body of Christ. Unholy people are now called holy in the name of grace. Even when Jesus forgave the woman that was caught in adultery, he says to her, go and sin no more. So there is a sin that can be sinned. And there is an ability to sin no more. If Jesus could command a prostitute to go and sin no more, that means there is an ability in salvation. There is a power in salvation that can make a believer to not sin again. When the woman that was caught in adultery met Jesus, Jesus did not condemn her. He had mercy on her. He justified her. He cleansed her up. He purged her. And he gave her power to go and sin no more. And of course, this woman could not overcome her sin with mercies. But when she met Jesus, Sir, Mom, if you are still in sin, you haven't yet met Jesus. My question would be, which Jesus have you met?